Hey, what's up guys? This is the Hague headrest mount. It's a car mount for your DSLR or video recording cameras. If you wanted to record your car when you're driving, the dashboard, the central panel, then you can mount your camera on the headrest of your car with the ball head at the end of this. So I just wanted to set this up, showcase to you guys how this works. Is it easy and is it worth it? So let's go into the car and take a look. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is that this has some sliders here and it can be adjusted to any width of your headrest mount height adjustable bars here. So I would recommend you move this towards the end of the, the mount here so that the ball head at the end of this side has enough space for the size of your camera. Now the max payload for this is two kilograms. So make sure you check your camera's weight and the lens weight together. Try not to put any accessories on top of the camera because you might add too much pressure onto this. What I also recommend is you do this from the front side and then you clip it into place like this so that you won't have any of the spikes of the screws facing towards the back of your neck because that's obviously not gonna be very comfortable if you lean back. And then the ball head just at the end, if you unscrew it, you can adjust this in any direction as well, like so. And then you can tighten that and again, the ball head itself, you can adjust that in 360 degree to whichever angle you think would be perfect to get the shot of your car. So I'm gonna mount it like this. All I need to do is first unscrew all of these so the plate comes off and then I will clip it into the height adjustable bar there as well. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay guys, so now it's very tight. I've screwed all four of these screws into place. It's super solid. The last step is now to just mount my camera onto the ball head and I am ready to go. So I'm going to be testing the stability of this. You might need to have a wide angle camera as well to get a full shot of your car. So just make sure you check your focal lens on your lenses. And once I've mounted it, let's go for a quick drive and see how it performs. So now it's mounted on top of the ball head. I've secured it. I've put this very tight so that it doesn't move. I've centered it. Now, when I'm driving, just take note that my lens is 28 millimeters in focal length. I think I could probably get more of the dashboard if I was to have a more ultra wide lens. So I would recommend probably 17 millimeters would be very ideal to get the entire cabin. Now the ball head is the standard quarter inch screw. So you can actually put your phone on there as well. So if you get a smartphone mount, you can get ultra wide angle footage with your phone not just your camera but for the purpose of showing a max payload on this for professional video recording I'm using my mirrorless camera the Sony a7 III but if I use my mobile phone then I would get an absolute excellent job in getting the wide angle view of my cabin and the road ahead so I'm recording this clip that you're seeing right now with my phone whilst the camera is on this mount so as you can see this is the wide angle now and if I was to position this in a similar position, in comparison, I would get a lot more area for recording in the car. So I would do a lot of recordings in the car with my iPhone 12 Pro. So let's go ahead and take a drive and see what you guys think of the stability in it. So one of the use cases why you would use this is if you wanted to do reviews of a car, maybe you have a new car, you're talking about the screen, the functionalities, the steering wheel, any of those kind of things, this would be perfect for that. Or if you just want to have like your friends in a car and you want to have discussions of you on a road trip or a general vlog there's multiple different reasons why you would set a camera up like this so let's go ahead for a quick drive and see how this performs and i'll try to reposition the camera in different views so you can see from both the driver side headrest and the passenger side headrest how it looks and what you can see when you set it up in different locations Even with a bit of acceleration and a bit of speed, I can see that it's very stable. So let me know what you guys think in terms of the stability. It's a bright sunny day today and it would be very easy to still see all of the dashboard, everything on screen. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull up and reposition the camera so you can see more of the road rather than more of the car. 
Okay guys, so now I've aimed this at the road. I've made it manual focus so that it doesn't lose focus on me waving my hands around underneath. So you can see the screen, you can see everything in front. So if you're doing any driving videos, you wanted to showcase some of the views, then I think this is great for that as well. As you can see, it's super clear and it's super steady, which is the main thing. If you didn't have something like this, then what you might need to do is get someone to sit in the back seat and hold the camera very still for you. Or I've seen some other mounts which mount the camera on a windscreen. And those ones are quite risky because they might slip off depending on the condensation or the temperature. They might slip off like you sometimes do with sat navs. But this one, you can pretty much guarantee it's gonna be secure because you have screwed it into place on your seat. Right, so I've just pulled out one more time guys and now I'm gonna switch the position of the camera to the passenger headrest and aim it a little bit towards me as the driver. So if you wanted to see more of yourself speaking and commentating, then this is something that you can use this for as well. So let me go ahead and do that. Right, so I've mounted the camera on the passenger side headrest. I've also tilted the seat a little bit back as well, just so I can get a more field of view of the driver. So now let's go for a drive and see how this position comes out. If you really wanted to get someone driving more of the steering wheel, more of the driver's side window, then this would be the position to have it at. Although you can reposition it from this side and have it facing the road or the cabin at the front as well, which is not a problem. So for me, ideally, the best position to have this is always going to be on the passenger seat. You get more flexibility to cover everything that you might want to do. So let's go ahead and take another drive. So again, I always recommend that you have a wide angle camera. Right now, this is 28 millimeters. You can see me and I've got this on autofocus, but it's going to be picking me up most of the time. And you just want a different perspective of your videos and you want the driver speaking, then this is also a great way to have that. So you can point it towards the driver and it'll be absolutely fine. Now I'm super happy with this. Anytime I'm going to need to review anything with the car, I won't need to ask for any help. I can just set this up onto the headrest mount and everything would be perfect. So now I'm back home. So that's about it guys. This headrest mount comes in at 54 pounds on the cameragrip.com website. The link is down below if you guys wanna check it out. If you wanna do car review videos, this is perfect for that. If you also wanna just have a recording of your trips or anything like that, it's also good. There's multiple uses for it. And if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. I do plenty of videos for my car, car accessories, and all types of cool gadgets, which I know you're gonna like. And I will catch you guys next time. Take care.